Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto awakens, the most special Ock bloodline with devil power. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Crimson red, ocean green and moon pale. Like the full moon rising above the ocean at night, with blood red clouds that frame such beauty. He would have blushed if he wasn't dying. Her shocked look upon her face seems to only increase her beauty. Who knew jumping between realms could have caused his body to be almost ripple apart? Well he should have known from his past life memories. Were it not for the young woman trying to save his life, he would have bleed out. Five pawns, a rook, a knight, a bishop. And half the heart of the young woman. A heart. More like life force. He could feel her emotions being poured into that small marble she was making. It was only a matter of time before his plan began. But for now. He might as well enjoy himself. Hello, my. Angel. Of the night. He barely said while struggling to even speak to the young woman beside him. Only the surprised look on her face was all he could see before he saw nothing but darkness. Azure blue eyes awoke to the bright light of the morning sun, peering its way between the curtains. With a soft sigh from his lips, Naruto sent out a pulse of chakra which bounced off of the entire room he was in. Here he took notice of whom laid beside him, naked as the day she was born. Crimson red hair, soft pale skin, fully formed breasts that were just aching to be touched, her still forming curves, that pink supple ass, and a juicy peach. Damn you Jiraiya. His inner musing cursing came to a still as ocean green eyes slowly opened greeting the blonde to the woman in her bed. Now Naruto had a few options to choose from. One, he could act like his traditional immature self and jump full out of the bed. Or. Two, he could see if she will be willing to stay in bed with him. Yes the second choice seemed to excite his old self, long before he was Naruto Uzumaki. Back when he once lived as Shinju the Terrible, Shinju the Destroyer, Shinju the Cheosbringer. So laying back down and pulling the girl close to him, caused the girl's face to bright close to the color of her own hair. How he angled himself to where she laid almost on his chest with one leg wrapped around himself hip, with his arms cuddling her close to where her firm breast laid smooth with his toned chest. But the one thing that drew her attention the most was the heat of iron touching her. Which. Like a bolt of thunder and lightning, the redi jumped off the bed, her face burning brighter than her hair, the boys. No that man's deep throaty chuckle that sparked her heart to jump within her bosom. Not used to when the tables turn. The man said as he noticed he too was undressed this morning, oh well nothing a bit of the yin yang tin can't fix. It was here that the young woman watched as the young man's body was covered in black from toe to neck, before it slowly took on textures, fabrics, and color. In the wake before her she watched as the black substance faded to leave behind white sneakers, black jeans, and a white shirt underneath a black button dress shirt. On the back was a orange outlining of a crescent moon with ten pointed star within the opening. Her shock at seeing Suck's skillful use of magic was extraordinary, to make clothes from nothing. She could say that her choice in peerage was on the mark. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, may I have the pleasure of your name? Naruto said snapping the girl out or daydreaming. Race Germany, heiress of the Germany clan, one of the 72 pillars of hell. Only 72 left. Sad really if it went from 300 down to 72 pillars, then I must have given quite the fight. Naruto whispered to himself which was not missed to the redared heiress. I believe you are one of the strangest people I know. It took more than half my pawns, a rook, a knight, and a bishop. To resurrect you, I find it a bit odd. She said leaving out she had gave half her heart as well. And I thank you, tell me why did you refer to chess pieces? You see shortly after the great war between heaven, hell and the fallen. The four great Mao decided to create a game of sorts. As a substitute for warring factions. But instead of just little pieces on a board. They created evil pieces. Each in the bedjining look much like a normal chess piece. There are a total of 15 pieces, a queen, two knights, two rooks, two bishops, and the king, being me, are high class devils that enact an enrollment for each piece. You on the other hand took almost of my pieces, leaving me only three pawns. I never seen or heard of such a thing. You must be powerful for that to happen almost like a second queen. She said mostly to herself. Naruto on the other hand was trying to be patient, but sadly the words from the gorgeous woman were becoming increasingly dull. So he felt he should have some amusement, but how? Destroy the world. Conquer the realms of heaven and hell. Or. Invite this sweet and innocent little devil to his dark side. Oh he felt so giddy think of the face the young woman would be wearing once he was done with her. That was when his. Diabolical scheme, when he felt a small sting. The feeling of guilt or regret he would have if he ever tried to harm this girl, though small it hurt greatly at the thought. But his internal thoughts were interrupted by the snapping sounds of the young woman's fingers. Yes. Came the uninterested tone from the blonde, looking at her with dull eyes. 
I asked why is it you fell from the sky in front of my home? The girl said with slight anger. Let me answer that question with another, do you believe in transdimensional travel, the ability to travel between not just time and space, but between two separate dimensions? Parallel universes each with a sudden or drastic change from the other. Tell me do you believe in such a thing? He said as he walked around the large room, he took notice of large stacks of manga, and I'm, and. Retro figures. Oh great, an attack of devil. If there was a deity higher than I, I would curse them to the pit. So you're from another universe are you from Menma, where people learn to use their inner force to do spells and enchantion. Ooh or perhaps you are from world where they have insane alien robots hellbent on destroying humanity. From angry and mature to hyperactive and childish. Looking at the girl he felt he need to slap her silly for such an thought. Well mostly for the second guess than anything. Kind of the first one. Naruto said as the girl seemed to disappear in front of him only to reappear fully dressed and with stacks of manga and an IM DVDs. Okay. Listen I just want what the full summary of what these say. Okay. Well the main character, Menma Yuzanaki, he was born in a village of mages, on the night of his birth his village was attacked. By a beast of unprecedented power, it was called the Agashi the Jaws of Death. His mother and father died that night, their final wish was for him to be seen as a hero. Instead none would happen. He was cast from high to the low. Forced to live a life where he could be killed any time of any day. But as he grew his magic was stronger than any before him he joined a mage's guild, from there they taught him spells and everything he would need to live. But they also sabotaged his learning, giving him subpar skills, but what they didn't know was that he could turn a low-level spell into a high-level one. As the years pass he grew stronger and protected what was precious to him. Rhea said as she gained blush on her face as she felt she had went into her infamous attack mode. Sounds similar, but where I am from I wasn't no mage. I was a ninja. Naruto said as he saw the look in her eyes glossed over with shining stars. Sit down and I will tell you the history of both our worlds. Once they were comfortable, Naruto began his tell. Before I begin, know this I will start with your history. In my previous life, I was a being of pure chaos and carnage. All around was darkness. No light, just nothingness. But being the only thing in existence was a lonely one. So from the darkness came a light. A light of order, to bring balance to the universe. And in the union between the two came two beings one of light the other of darkness. But not pure like their predecessors. Each tainted but the other. They were Satanael and Adonia, or simply Satan and God. And from then came the devils and angels. The first among heaven were Lucifer, Pyrrhal, Gabriel, Raphael, Michael, and Uriel. And those from hell, Behemoth, Leviathan, Belzebub, and Cerberus. And all was good. But then came a new kingdom. The kingdom of man. Their souls fueled the powers of heaven and hell. Order took pity on man and became the life force and knowledge for man to live, and all was well. In time both angels and devils took an interest in the children of man. From them gave birth to the Nephilim race, a monstrous race of monsters, those of myth and legends. They soon died off, mostly due to being hunted by both angel and demon. Over time there were two great wars between them with neither side winning. It was only in their final war. Long after the fall of Pyrrhal and Lucifer, when they took a third of heaven's angels with them. Then they sought a weapon or what should be said was they sought to find their grandfather of sorts. But they did not account for the being to have a will of its own. And in its anger he brought the attention of God and Satan. It was not a war but a slaughter. Half of all the realms both heaven and hell were killed. But it was the third kingdom that saved the three. A young mortal who cast a great beast of chaos into the endless abyss. That was ten thousand years ago. The blonde said as he drew the young girl's attentive imagination. He could only be amused by the girl's reaction. After its journey into the abyss, he landed on a world much like his own, but when he landed on the land he slowly began to transform into a tree. His power seeding itself into the world. For thousands of years his roots ran deep into the world. But then came a woman who wished to end the wars plaguing her lands. The ancient being fell in love with the woman's pure heart. So he gave her a small fruit of his powers. And soon she ended wars and became a goddess in her own right. And all was well for a time. She later gave birth to twin sons. Who she loved dearly. But like all great things they must come to an end. Naruto watched as the girl's rapidly growing attention, watching her emotions playing over her eyes. When her sons become men, they turned on her. Sealing her away. The great tree became enraged. And in his anger he became a great beast. A ten-tailed beast he sought revenge the woman he came to care about by the betrayal of her sons, his sons, their sons. But in his enraged mind, he did not see outside his bloodlust. And in that state they won, the youngest of the two seal the ten tails within himself. And over time the man grew old and frail. To ensure that the ten tails would never step onto the plane again he separates the power, emotions of the beast into nine beasts each of a tail. From the single tail to the nine tails. 
each taking an emotion. But the spirit and body were sealed away. The body was sealed into a statue, the spirit fled into the spirit well only to reincarnate it thousands of years later. Only to have the ninth of nine sealed within the reincarnation. In the years that followed, he had to fight in a war. A war where a madman tried to resurrect his former self. That battle lasted weeks, but in the end he won, sealing the other eight of the nine within him, he also ate the flesh of his old self. Which would have killed anyone else. He became the new ten tails taking the gift he gave his old love away from Thosas that disgraced that gift. Those he called friends and loved ones came to hate him. And in his defense he ended the lives of thousands, hundreds of thousands. When all was done he gained the lost memories of his past life, and when he found a way to return, he did not count for his mortal body being far too weak to jump the abyss. But when he arrived he saw a beautiful woman THST Woody his weakened and dying form. A woman he is now in servitude to. He said as he knelt before the redeed. And by my ten tails, I will serve you, Rias Germary. I will be your shield to protect you from you enemies, I will be your sword to slay those THST dare disgrace your honor. I am your weapon, point me to your enemies, and I will let the ground drink the blood of those that stand against your mighty greatness. Once he had finished his oath, a flare of spiritual energy irradiated from his being in an aura of ten tails of black fire. Rias could almost see in the dark miasma that formed behind him was a ten-tailed beast with a large red eye with three rings and nine tomos, it almost looked like a large wolf. So entrapped by the unholy beauty before her, the young heiress of the Germary clan could think of any words. It was almost as if God had sent her, her own true devil into her servitude. Five months later. Naruto could say he was enjoying himself, but a while back well back learned Tha he had to attend school, since it was against the law for him not to be in school. So what did he do instead? The answer was far from more simpler to him than it was to any of Rhea's peerage or Rhea's herself. Shadow clones. He sent over a thousand of them into the city collecting information he might need, all of them hinged of course. It had taken him over 16 hours to find know what he needed in this world. Mostly what had happened in his absence. To find that there was a lot was surprising. But he endured, after all libraries had vast amounts of information than schools. And since it was mostly his clones doing the work he just laid around his king's domain for the time being, as to get some of the paperwork down. But it was the headache he got after his clones dispelled that annoyed him mostly. But right now he sat in class with his king's new interest of boy, that seemed to be the son Jiraiya never had, and would never father. Disgusting if you ask him, but orders were orders. Now what was that kid's name again? Sissy. No. Yes. No, that's Spanish, S. No, that's French. Is. Maybe. Were his thoughts as he walked the halls of the school to the roof. He found it to be relaxing while not as relaxing as the cage monument. It was just as nice. He had already met the rest of Rhea's peerage, but he found them entertaining, Kaneko seemed to be like Hint without the fainting, just a quiet girl that didn't bother anyone, Kiba was just like Sasuke, but far more social and a tad bit nervous. Akeno. Sadistic, flirtatious, and kinky as hell. Like the daughter-sister of Anko. The chill down his spine was either excitement or dread he was not sure as of yet. And Rhea's. She is quirky and dorky when it came to an Imer manga. Just had to give her those big-ass mirror glasses that hides the eyes. He, but when it came down to her personality he found her to be most intriguing. Like that she had grown into the nasty habit of sleeping nude, no complaining. A sore loser, competitive, and had been at times slightly stubborn. Well old hag, you finally got your damn wish. I finally met someone that is more troublesome than I am. Naruto said as he looked over the school grounds from on top the roof. But it was from here he saw the boy and his friend spying on the girl's locker room and said with a mischievous grin. Curse on my prankster half. It only took a second, but Naruto caused a slight shift in the wind to make the boys stumble over, which caused the girls inside to take notice of their peepers. The beatings that ensured was by far entertaining for Naruto to watch. He spent most of the lunch hour reminiscing on his newly found school days. In the beginning many of the boys tried to persuade him from hanging around with Rias, as it would be safer for his health. Most of these were followed by multiple injuries and hospitalizations, after that many had come to call him the blonde devil. Not that far off. While he scared the male population away, it was the female populace that caused him to stay away from them. Fangirls, only an unholy being with a sick and twisted mind would make such a thing. Sure as heaven and hell wasn't himself. But he soon found himself not alone on the roof as beside him was his female king, on he found himself calling his angel just spider and make her blush. May I be of service my angel. His irony wasn't lost on the young Ritid as she sneered at his ironic joke. We will be recruiting him tonight. She said looking down at the boy walking, crawling, away from his beating. Aw, is my sweet queen tired of her new toy already? As he said this he walked up behind her and wrapped his arms around her, this caused her face to light up at how close he was. 
Moving closer he whispered in primal dominance filled lust in her ear, she could only shiver at how he played her buttons. Maybe I should take you back to bed, like I did last night. After all you were begging me not to stop. Leaning down kissing her neck caused him you at his heated touch. Oh she knew he was strong, far more stronger than most devils. Losing her virginity to him was worth it, it was raw passionate love, bestial in nature while slow and caring. She knew she was violating her arranged marriage. But she didn't care he would be here for her. He would stand by her side until the end. Please, Nurikin. She pleaded to her lover, only to stutter as she felt his hands wandering her body as he placed kisses around her neck. Not here. And like that it ended, well disappointed she knew he did this as a form of teasing. Just to rev her internal engine with his playing. Only to leave her hanging when she asked she both loved and hated him for that. Nerikin, are we still having our date tonight? Seeing him going back to the entrance to the roof, only for him to turn and smile to her. Of course we are. But remember our deal. He said only to disappear behind the closing door. For her she could only blush in embarrassment about their deal. A deal which was mostly him marking her as his. Which was no showing her naked form to anyone else but him. His jealousy was mostly his primal side kicking in. She loved that about him, he was very territorial it was charming sometimes. She did find her. Secret admirers had decreased since he came along. But now focusing on the task at hand, she had to decide how to recruit her new pawn. Later, THST evening. Lying in bed with his arms wrapped around her luscious form, it may have been six months since Naruto had joined her, but it was only three months since they started their relationship. She was somewhat fearful if he finds out about her. Prior engagement. Would he still can't for her or would he resent her for hitting it from him? But these thoughts fled away as she felt him nestle her form against his. So my little princess, did you leave Akino to deal with young Issei? Asked a rumbling voice into her back which sent pleasurable shivers throughout her body. Yes, I did. Why, do you think it was a bad idea? No, it would be nice to see your queen find someone to have fun with. He said as he rolled onto his back, in turn caused Rias to turn around to snuggle into his chest with his arm draped around her. So, how many pieces? Three pawns and four mutated pieces. Given that he has a sacred gear. Though not as pricey as you. She said as she led it up to him on the cheek. Do you regret it? He asked with a smirk which caused her to blush under the red moonlight. No. Good, because I would fear my sweet angel will cast me adrift. He said in mock theatrical pain. Because I don't like to live a life of regrets or would haves. So long as I have you I don't care if you wage war against all the kingdoms. I will be your knight, your god slayer, or even the Cheosbringer. I will die to protect you, my dear sweet Rias. After pulling her into a passionate kiss, the two succumbed to blissful sleep. Until the next day when a high-pitched scream was heard. Club room. Naruto sat cross-legged on the ceiling, it was enjoyable to find no one noticed him there other than Rias and her queen Akeno. While Kaneko could sniff him out, she didn't know where he was, same followed with Kiba he could sense him, but didn't know where he was. Issei on the other hand was obvious to the fact he was even in the room. Hmm, should I appear beside Rias and kiss her to spite him, or should I appear behind him with a kunai and pull an ankitchen? Ooh, decisions, decisions. The blonde thought to himself as he watched the ongoings. But his thoughts were stopped abruptly as he saw the look in Issei's eyes, as he looked at his, Naruto, woman. Both it shall be. Appearing beside Rias with his arms around her, as he laid a kiss on her neck from behind as he casted a dark look to Issei to show that Rias was off limits. But to Issei it was like looking into the eyes of monster, a cold chill ran through him almost telling him not to anger the blonde. Or it could be the feel in of cold steel against his neck, poking at his jugular. Issei should watch where he lays his eyes. After all I just might let my blade slip. We don't want that now do we? Came a too cheerful voice from behind the brunette. Nerikin, please don't kill the new pawn. He is after all a freshman among us. Rias chimed her lover. But seeing her boyfriend's clone go sad for a moment before jumping back to a hyperactive child was going to be amusing what came next. Does that mean I get to train the mutt? Can I? Can I? Yes, you may. But no killing or maiming. The redeed said only to a disappoint wine come from the blonde. But other than that is free game, after all he will be representing the house of Germany and myself. So a well-trained servant is better than not. If that is your wish my sweet. Came the bloodthirsty rumble from both blondes. Only Issei felt his world turn to darkness and frozen fear. With Kiba, Akeno, and Kaneko jumping to the far side of the room away from the newly reborn pawn. Ara, Ara. I think Narita-sama is having far too much fun. The Revenator spoke in a somewhat nervous tone as she knew how sadistically cruel and merciless the masterpiece could be. Two months of training with him left the three others, including herself scared for life. Poor Kanekachin now suffered from PTS, any loud banging sound would cause the poor girl to freak out and race to the nearest shelter. 
but it was getting better. As she now took in her surroundings more clearly now. Gibba. Had a nervous habit of checking over his shoulder every nine seconds and kept muttering about flames of youth and yoey harems in skin-tight green spandex. Akeno herself dealt with multiple mental scaring, one was a pair of older men, one reminded her of a long hair snakish Michael Jackson and a white hair toad looking pervert. Slimy eye sides of snakes and toads was now her most feared thing in the world. She still had nightmares once in a while of creepy perverts and somehow Issei triggered some instinctive reaction of her to thoroughly inflict pain onto his person. The sum it would seem Ria's was not affected by him training regiment, they would be partly correct. But her side effects were enjoyable for both herself and her blonde Adonis. She never thought of herself as a sadistic masochist nymphomaniac. Oh she gets chills thinking of being physically punished in training. Time skip. Naruto stood beside Ria's as they encountered a fallen, a mock gentleman with a sly personality, which Naruto didn't quite enjoy as he looked down up the black-winged angel with disgust, it was that he was a fallen angel that he looked upon him with such irritants, but his cliché dressing of an ominous intent. He himself too to dress as a well-suited young man. Looking like a well-in-state business businessman, Naruto had presented himself well for his clientele. Doing things like arranging bills and other payments for businesses to helping single women with questionable desires. Nadi was complaining. He always left them beyond satisfied. Why do I feel like a cheap whore? The thought to himself before shugging off the feeling as he helped escort the injured Issei back to the club room to be healed. Naruto-sama, when do you expect to start Isakin's training? Asked the ravenette as she placed some bandages over Issei's injuries. I will start his torture I mean training first thing in the morning. He said as that malicious grin made its way across his face. While Akeno was sadistic, she was not so cruel. Naruto was in wasn't afraid row show it. She would almost feel bad for Issei. Almost. Next morning. Issei awoke to ice cold water wing dropped on him, he was about to shout at how cold it was before a bucket of hot water hit him. Dude you're up. Now let's begin your training. I don't want to hear any bitching, complaining, or moaning from you. The only one I love to hear that from is Rias. Understand Naruto said in a drill sergeant manner. The two young men could hear the redeed beauty yell something about blonde perverts in the background. Now, I want you to do 100 laps around the old school, followed by 150 sit and push ups, 200 jumping jacks, then when you are done with the warm up. We will start on weight training, followed by combat practice. Now move it, Solider. The fang grin shone as Naruto left a clones to deal with a newbie, while he went and lazy back down with Rias. Was he lazy? Who wouldn't with a beautiful woman like her? Did he slack off with his training? No, he just finished his before waking a say for his. Was Rias playing with his morning wood just now? You ain't gonna know. Naruto and his lovely Redeed both awoke to a painful scream coming from outside, a large fanged grin spread across his face as he gained the memories of his clone, apparently Issei was not trained for flexibility, something his clone took care of. Twin Kiwis rest in peace. Hey, Narakin. Do you have to be so harsh on my pawn? Rias mumbled as she snuggled back into her spot on Naruto's chest. Enjoy the feeling of Naruto playing with her hair. Sorry babe, if he want to achieve that asinine dream of his. He would have to be stronger. He is weaker than Kiba in skill, weaker than Kaneko in strength, hell he will get his ass kicked by Akeno. Naruto said as he pinched the bro of his nose with his spare hand. At this rate it would be a hundred years before before even gets promoted to a mid-class devil. That is if he is lucky. Betting an agreeable hum from the girl, only to see her go from totally relaxed and sleep to upright and frantic. Naruto, this weekend is a full moon correct? Yes, a blood moon if I am right. He said thoughtfully. Then Friday night we are going to get you and Issei a familiar. The heiress of the Germary clan said as he bounced about the room getting dressed while humming an upbeat tune. Like there will be a beast that could match me. Naruto said as he got up and zipped his fly, who knew that Rias dreamt about turning butter. Not that he was complaining. Say Rias, how would you feel about a date later? Thinking back on the last few months, he realized that he and Rias never actually went out on a real date. It was mostly sitting around the club room cuddling or laying in bed cuddling, or his favorite relaxing in the forest white his head resting in her lap. Like a date. She asked somewhat surprised he would ask her out, she knew he hated being out and about. But to go out on an actual date was something she wanted to experience. Yay, dinner, movie, the whole shebang. Just you, me and a whole night to ourselves. Naruto said as he walked over to Ria's, who was looking into a mirror to see if her uniform was in proper order. Only for Naruto to step up behind her with her arms snaking themselves around her waist and his chin resting upon her head. I am not just asking to make it official between us, but to show that I can be an actual boyfriend instead of my antisocial self. Oh, Naruto-kun. Was all she said as she turned around to kiss her blonde lover. Knock knock. Whoever it is, it better be important or I will punish their asses if it isn't. 
Ray's thought with murderous intent as she slipped out from her boyfriend's arms to answer the door. Only to answer it with a strained tone of irritants. Yes. Ryasama, as Sison has finished his workout as per Naruto-sama's orders. Also class starts in 25 minutes. The class pretty boy said as he moved to the side as he expected his king to race out of the room like a bat from hell. The irony wasn't lost, but the feeling of darkness and destruction that came from behind him was terrifying. Slowly turning to look at the man. No a monstrous entity that took the form of a man, standing there with a smile that could only give nightmare. Good morning, Naruto-sama. Morning, Kibichin. Tell me did you finish your workout this morning or skipped it? The tone while innocent to all but those that knew him would think it was the same tone one would use with a younger sibling. But to Kiba and the other members of Ria's peerage knew better. The only question Kiba asked himself was would he live longer if he told the truth or lied. As the all saying goes. The truth will set you free. I uh. Thought it would better if I did so before I went to bed this evening, that way I would get twice the workout in just a few short hours. Kiba said with both deceit and honesty. That made him almost regret his words as Naruto stood no more than a few inches from him staring at him looking for lies, anything to use against his person. But after a moment of sweating like a stuck pig, Naruto's stern look of a man ready to kill changed into a happy-go-lucky man that grinned like the village idiot. Excellent idea Kibichin, I am sure everyone would love that idea. Just let me tell the others at lunch. I am sure they will thank you for fanning their flames of youth. Naruto said as he left to go to school with Rias. Kiba's once feeling of relief turned to horrifying guilt. He doomed all of Ria's peerage to a fate worse than death. The Keno and Kaneko are going to kill me. School. Classes sucked, this whole ordeal sucked, and most of all. A Keno's tea was awesome. It had only been 15 minutes since lunch started, and as Naruto expected Kibble was not going to show for the next few hours. Seeing a Keno the Nephilim turn devil, Kaneko the feline yakai, and Issei the red dragon. No. The salamander. Much better. All sat waiting for Kiba to show up since it was an important meeting. Well it has been 15 minutes, and I not waiting anymore. Now let me being with it was Kibichin's idea to make a change in all of your training regiments. As of now there will be late night training, with those that live with Ryushim. Isakin since you live with your parents, your training will be exactly 4 hours before school. And 4 hours after, assuming nothing comes up. See isn't it fun? It's stronger in so little time. Naruto said with a jubilant brilliance at caused the others to think of ways to kill the school's pretty boy. Sorry I'm late, had to deal with fangirls. Speak of the devil, and he shall appear. When Kiba saw those murderous eyes of the, the three. He felt THST dealing with fangirls was now he better option. On second thought, I forgot I still had some classes to attend. His escape was stopped when he felt three hands place themselves on him, one on his shoulder, his head, and his forearm. Before the one on his head forcibly turned his head to look at the ones behind him. Popping joints with a ratchet-like turn. The smiles of death staring at his soul. Everything in his body telling him to run for his life. The Keno's a distant grin, with lightning dancing around her, as her eyes were closet shut almost like a fox ready to play with their food before killing it painfully. The Say's blank look told Kiba what he already knew. I am taking you with me to hell. But it was Kaneko that scared him the most, while she normally had a sonic look on her face. It was our replaced with a very pissed off looking cat, her nails were digging into his arm, ensuring he won't leave. Should have stayed with the fangirls. The young knight P said as rivers of tears fell from his eyes. Later that day. Naruto watched in amusement as he oversaw his Himes pawn getting rather friendly with a nun, he knew of the holy and unholy feud. But this girl was pure as freshly fallen snow. It would a greater sin to taint such purity. But it would seem that Issei saw now problem. Quickly turning around Naruto watched as the fallen angel that had almost killed Issei before he became a devil, kidnapped the blonde nun. I am so gonna make him regret making me and Ria's miss our date this evening. The blonde devil said with a very noticeable twitch of his eye. Before he disappeared in whirlwind of leaves. The cult club room. Naruto sat in a big comfy satin chair, with Ria sitting upon his one side of his lap, with her legs draped over the other. He was enjoying the jealous glare from the bold pervert, but it would seem that he actually focused on saving this new girl, Asia Argento, who happened to be an exile nun. Normally Naruto wouldn't care, but he had seen her soul. So pure it was almost sinful. Narakin, what you think in should do? Ask his redared lover, who looked depressed about the situation. By now Issei already left along with Akeno. Let me tell you something a teacher of mine once said, those that disobey the rule are trash, but those that abandon their friends, family, or loved ones are worse than trash. They're scrum. He is just doing what I would do if someone told me not to bother saving you. Naruto said as he pulled Ria's clothes and hugged her tightly. He would rather become trash than become scrum. I see. Shall we go then? By all mean my sweet. After you. Chapel. 
Naruto watched the ongoings between the fallen angels and his princess and her peerage. He found that while Lisse was perverted beyond measure, the boy was somewhat noble-hearted. In a sick and twisted sort of way and showed genuine concern for the exile nun. But he started to realize that Riaz and the others will not make it in time, also Issei was struggling on his final wind. Show time, I guess. From the darkness I walk into the light, from the day I walk into the night, from the shadows I will appear with a message for all who will hear. For the weak of heart I will be strong, to the defenders of faith I will belong, till the last of you fight till you die, till the keys of the three kingdoms are mine. Aim a voice so demonic that even the devils of hell would seem in saints, while this being made his presence known. The church's organ began to play an hunting holy song that only fueled the fears of the fallen angels and exorcists alike. Then it came the bone-chilling laughter that would put fear into the hearts of the gods themselves. Now, let the innocent girl go, or I will rip out your souls. Stepping out from the darkness, stood Naruto wearing a new style of armor, no sense in destroying his school uniform. Wearing black armor with highlights of gold trimming, all made in a series of flames and few injutsus markings. But it was the ruby red eyes that seemed to glow with a power beyond holy and unholy magic. Medieval Batman full hell meaning no open place for the mouth and the destroyer Iron Man as guardian armor. With wolf head palladians. For all standing there it was only Rainer, while she was youngest among the fallen angels. She knew who this being was from here and about the being, whose power was sk great it took the three kingdoms combined to cast the terrifying being into the abyss. Tell me, exile follower of Adonia. Do you know who I am? His voice seemed to rattle the very earth on which they stood. Shinju the Chaos Bringer. Said the Ravenette in a terrified tone but showed great respect, the other minor fallen trembled in his presence, the exorcists while did not quake physically, felt their souls being grind by his spiritual power. Good, but I am no longer Shinju. I am Naruto, your destroyer. He announced as with a wave of his hand the minor fallen angels and exile exorcists were turned to ash before her eyes. The glowing hatred from those ruby gem-like eyes told her she might not live beyond this night. Tell me girl. Why did you see fit to harm an innocent? Did you not know that even I frown upon such acts of atrocity? If it were any minor devil or angel she would have told them to go fuck themselves, but before her was a being that could destroy all of reality with a wave of his hand. It was wise of her to keep her tone respectful. Answer wench, before I send you into the oblivion in a painfully slow manner. The event in his voice terrified her. We need a pure soul for a ritual of power. She said meekly, she could even put up at front to this being that is in a from of a man. If it power you wish, then power you shall have. In exchange for your freedom. The being said to her as a glowing green omega symbol appeared in his hand. All the power of Joas will be at your fingers. But you will obey my command to the letter. Failure to do so will end painfully to you. But the flick of his hand the symbol flew from his palm and painfully branded itself to the fallen angel's forehead, her pain filled scrum echoed the hall. As the the green flame marked her skin looking as if a horse had kicked her in the face. Before if slowly faded from sight. Now leave here live life as a mortal until a call upon you. Calamity. Nodding fearfully to the man in front of her, she fled and obeying her orders from her new master. With the power and knowledge she gained, she knew any betrayal would end in eons of torture before death would be given to her. Turning his attention back to the unconscious boy and soulless shell of the young nun. Naruto felt a strike of pain in his chest looking at the girl. To him, she reminded him of both Hinata and Shion. Only a few women would ever strike his ice heart like those two did so long ago. Hinata-chan, Shion-chan. Forgive me for my sins. He whispered to himself, though it was just loud enough to be heard if anyone was around. Come back to the world of the living, so your pure soul will light the darkness of this ugly yet beautiful world, Asia. Summoning a ball of white light within his hand no bigger than a small marble that seemed to pulsate as and floated down to the girl's chest. With a startling gasp, the young blonde nun took her reborn, still mortal, breath, only to see a demonic black knight kneeling over her. Frightened of what this man would do she was about to scurry away from him. No need to fear me, young one. Taking off his dark helm to reveal Naruto's handsome face and blonde locks of hair. Caused the young girl to blush at seeing his face. Are you Satan? The girl asked in fear, having heard stories that the devil would take the form of a gorgeous looking man. No, I am not my son. Although I heard he was envious of others' beauty. The man said with a chuckle. But it was when he said his son. Caused her to look at the man. Child, I swear to you I am not evil incarnate, just a misunderstood being of great power. Naruto said as he took a seat beside the girl with his back resting against the stone wall. Tell me child, have you ever heard the tales of Joe as an order, the being so powerful THST they created and destroyed worlds with just a blink of their eyes? What if I told you that between those two, it was Joe as who was the eldest by eons of eons? He was there in the beginning, and he will be there in the end. Joe's. It was a word to be used to describe an event or issue. 
but the way he said it was as if he was talking about a person. Asia could only watch the man sitting by her with caution-filled eyes, but the hint of wonder glazed them just a bit. Before time began, there was Joa's. But in the darkness of infinity was a lonely existence, so Joa's created order, Joa's light among the darkness. Together worlds were formed and they filled them with all forms of life. But from their union was birthed two beings Adonia and Sentinel, who were the first of their respective races. Adonia became the being called God, creating the angels. Sentinel sought fit to shorten his name when dealing with others, so became Satan and created the devils. These two became the first kingdoms, kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of hell. But as eons pass, war broke between the two. Whilst this happened a new race was born, from the seeds of chaos, but in still in its infancy, order grew a tree from her own seed. And from this tree great around them was a beautiful garden unlike any other. This was the Garden of Eden. And the tree was the tree of knowledge. For here the young race was forbidden to even touch the fruit the tree bared by Adonia because of his jealousy that his mother and father favored this race over his own. Sentinel having seen his brother's jealousy towards his younger sibling race. Transformed himself into a serpent and aided the young race to gain the knowledge of the knowings of the world and universe. But his brother turned his good deed into an unholy sin. As he saw that only angels and himself would be the supreme race. Bound to none, while others bowed to his greatness. Seeing the horrified look on the girl's face, he sought to twist the story just a bit. But in time, Adonia came to love the younger race, even began o favor it over his own angels, and later over millennia as one angel came to hate the young race, and he fell from grace along with those that followed him. Naruto said as he stood up and pressed a small seal on his chest armor, causing two to be sealed away within a belt buckle. Now, you heard my story of my children, and should have introduced myself. I am Naruto no Jubi. Seeing the man before her having his armor vanished in black flames to see him standing there in the same outfit as Issei's. She knew this man was either an ally or someone close to him. That was you till he walked over to the down boy. Smack. Smack. Issei, you better wake up or I will increase your training and start using actual attacks. No sooner had he said this Issei jumped from laying on the ground looking fearfully at his sensei. Naruto sensei. I wasn't asleep I swear. Comical enough Asia began to giggle at her secret crush's reaction. You better have not. But since you did something I would do as well. I will let tomorrow be your day off. Narek said as began to leave the church just as Ria's arrived. Remember Isakin, those that disobey the rules are trash, but those that abandon their loved ones are lower than trash. They're scrum. Naruto sat waiting for Ria's to return from her scolding of Issei and welcoming Asia into the fold. He himself had done some thinking as of late, mostly it had to do with his choice of weapons while well, he had training as a shinobi. He felt it would be cliché to be a ninja in Japan, so why not because a knight? It would be most entertaining to use ninshu while armored and armed as a European knight. He had his armor, now he just needed the weapons. His moment of silence came to an end as an idea struck his mind like thunder, but for him to do such he would need some time away to create these new weapons. But this idea would take a day or so to make, and the weekend was only four days away. Hey, fuck it. Naruto said as he threw his arms up and lazy back on the bed. Time was moving slowly today, and it irked him so. But the boredom and slight frustration he was experiencing ended as Ria's opened the door with a somewhat irritated expression on her face, but it had a small smile of satisfaction. So how did it go? As what one would expect when dealing with Issei, what Laisha had to cope with the fact she can no longer touch anything with holy powers, it was an eventful evening. And what of you? Ria's asked sitting next to him and on the bed with her head on his chest. Waiting for a contract, hopefully it won't be a boring one. Naruto said with a half-truth, he did want what he had planned to be a surprise for his princess. Hum. Hummed Ria's as she listened to the sound of Naruto's beating heart. That deep and steady thumb that just relaxed her senses. That is until a familiar chiming sound was heard. It would seem my contract has called me, I will be back soon. But that Naruto disappeared in through a chaos seal. Other side. Naruto found himself in a comfy-sized apartment suite. That was stylized with Edo period of Japan. Even the suit of armor sitting at the end of the room was crafted extremely well. Um, this armor was well crafted and is well well kept. Such work is rare to come by this day and age. Naruto said mostly to his self musing over the armor until he heard a bashful squeak. I see my summoner is encased with the armor. I am Naruto Uzumaki Shinju, how may I be of assistance? Do um Susan, foreign exchange student. Said the girl hiding within the samurai armor, only to mumble her request to an inaudible level. Could you repeat that? I was difficult to hear. Naruto asked politely leaning forwards with his head turned to hear the girl. I wish for you TK help me with the one I love. The girl yelled out loud in embarrassment, which only served to harm Naruto's sensitive hearing. I see, but am unable to help as it affects the free will of others. Thus is forbidden to do. 
Naruto said while it was hashed to say it was true. But seeing the girl become depressed, he thought of a solution. But it doesn't mean I can't help in that regard. So why don't you write a love letter to this guy? I could help if needed. To his amazement he watched the girl write out a love letter in the traditional Japanese way, it was fascinating, an ink tablet and brush. Even her use of a haiku stanzas. And flowering of words was old-fashioned even by elemental nation standards. His amazement turned to shock seeing her aim her arrow and bow with a note tied to the arrow. Oi, oi. What are you doing with that? It was too late for him as in a moment of excitement turned timid shame of her way of delivering her love letter, she let the arrow fly across the city. Well. Hopefully he will get that letter. Early morning. Naruto stood beside Susan, in his black knight armor, he even did quick yin yang jutsu and forged shield and sword, though not permanent, it was good for a temporary solution to his weapon shortage. It was a strange sight for those that were passing by, seeing a samurai and a black knight stand beside one another. Naruto and Susan only waited for a few moments, until a suite of pristine European-style armor came walking towards them, with shield in one hand and his sword sheathed. But what got Naruto's attention was the fact that Susan's arrow was lodged into her crush's helm. Turning to the girl, who he could tell was burning red with embarrassment, he felt like adding a little bit more oil to the fire. Nice shot, Suchin. He said with a teasing smirk, only to hear the girl give an innocent groan to his teasing. Naruto waited a bit until Susan's white knight stood before her. Lady Susan, your word of love have drove the arrow of love to my heart. Not my head. The armored man said only for Susan to hear Naruto snickering to the side. I would like it if. Old, brave Sir Knight. Before you continue you must best me combat Lady Susan's hand I am her champion. Naruto said stepping between the two. To be clear I do not stand before you as a competitor for her heart, but as a guardian for her maidenship. Trial by combat. Very well. I am Sir Bone. My I have the pleasure of your name. Naruto Uzumaki Shinju, the Chaos Knight. Naruto said drawing his sword. But tell me this before I run you through. Which code do you follow, Sir Bone? Code, what code? Bowen said as he drew his own blade. The code of the first knights, the most well-respected and honored knights to have ever lived and served. I am talking about the knights of the round. Naruto said as he swing his sword having a clash against Bowen's shield. Valor, a knight is sworn to valor. As Bowen striked back using his shield as a battering ram, knocking Naruto back, only to have Naruto strike back with equal force with his own shield. His heart knows only virtue. Locking their swords in a parry, Naruto started to apply force behind his own blade and began to push Bowen across the pavement. His blade defends the helpless. Using his shield to block Naruto thrusting strike of his sword, he returned favor with his own sword. His might upholds the weak. Swing after swing, bow after powerful blow, Bowen began to see his sword begin to chip and crack. His word speaks only truth. And with his last strike, Naruto shattered Bowen's one and half handed sword like glass. His wrath undoes the wicked. Hearing these words spoken from the Black Knight, Bowen felt a kinship to these words. Though his sword lay broke, he felt honored to be bested by a follower of the old code. You have passed the test, brave knight. You have earned Lady Susan's hand. Naruto said as he presented Bowen with his sword. And as to show you have fought the knight of the old code, give into you my blade, Jimetsu. Farewell to you both. Looking down at the blade in his hands, Bo could feel not help but admire the detail work of the blade, the Norse runes along the blood groove, and the twisted iron handle. Back at Rhea's room. Naruto entered the room to see Rhea still asleep in bed, her light breathing and the way her hair fanned out behind her, made her look like a red-winged angel sleeping gracefully. It's only been a few months and yet. I would do anything for her to see her smile. Naruto thought to himself as he sat down on the edge of the bed, he could tell she wasn't enjoying her dream as her brows nodded and the frown appearing on her face. That look alone was out of place since had known her. Brushing the few strains of her away exposing her angelic face, cused her to stiffen, but slowly relaxed back into a peaceful dream. For some bizarre reason, Naruto started to hum a melody. Panya's lullaby. Never noticing the flicker of silver bidding outside the window, as he hummed a soft tune to the red-haired young woman. Once he was finished Naruto crawled into bed forgetting about the weapons he had planned to make that evening. After the ORC versus the SC. Naruto sat behind the desk with Rias on his lap with amused look on his face, before him were the other members of the occult research club. Issei with an ice pack over his groin, Kibble Aang on the couch with few bruises, Asia was perfectly fine, Akeno having a sadistic pleasure smile on her face, and Lil Kaneko changed into a new uniform. Hell even Rias' uniform was scoffed a bit from Devil Level Tennis. I am glad I did not partake in this competition. Naruto said to himself out loud, which earned a glare from Issei, and a few amused looks from the others. Why didn't you join us, Naruto senpai The group pervert asked while straining the honorific. The same reason you don't use dynamite for fishing. It would ruin the fun. 
the older blonde said as he stroked Ria's thigh, kind glad the desk blocked his actions if he would never hear the end of it from Issa. I got hit in the nuts. How is that fun? I should rephrase that. It's fun to watch you get your ass handed to you. Pervert virgin. Naruto said in a snide tone. Only for a wash pan to fall onto Issa with the word virgin written on it in bold letters. Asshole. The brunette muttered to himself, only to feel death's icy grip on his soul. Did you say something, virgin pervert? The sickly sweet tone combined with the miasma and the shadow entity behind Naruto as he spoke to Issei made the poor boy shack in terror. Or maybe, the pervert asked to have his training increased by a hundred times. No. I said nothing, nothing at all. The boy said quickly as possible as he waved his arms back and forth. That's a good virgin. Naruto said with the Kai based in jutsu fading away. As he turned his attention back to the girl on his lap. So what's next, princess? Blushing at the endearing title he had given her, Rias couldn't stop her heart from skipping a beat as he held her. Since everyone called her but you, Naruto has always called her my dark angel or princess. Well later tonight we will go to War Asia, Issei, and yourself will attain your familiars. So I would like it if everyone will met here at 9pm, after all we need the moon's light to find them. Rhea said as she felt Naruto's hand slide up her thigh and under her skirt. Naruto, you are playing a dangerous game. And I wouldn't have it any other way. So Issei and Asia you can go home and rest, to find a familiar is sometimes a battle. NHMM everyone is dismissed. Once every was gone, Rias turned to Naruto and slapped him across the face for his intimate stun he had pulled, and still was if the finger inside her meant anything. You are such a bastard. Instead of replying with a comeback or a snide remark, Naruto pulled her into a passionate kiss, which he dominated her with leaving her red with embarrassment and arousal. Breaking the kiss Naruto said with almost a deep rumbling husky voice. But I'm your bastard. Hmm. She hummed in agreement as she went back for another kiss. Them being a bastard was fine, she knew he would be one from time to time, but he would always be there for her. I love you, Naruto. And I you, my dark angel. Was all he said as he just held her there in his lap. Hey this is a Mildred. Now as seeing how some of you told me that Fenrir is one of the main bad guys in DXD's world. You are also forgetting that the abyss is the void between other worlds. Kind of the reason between Naruto's world and DXD. Now I am only using another world's Fenrir, Sleipner, and Hujin. Marvel, I will be only be using their spirits as I am going to reborn them into something else. And I will have Surtur the Fire Giant Marvel, as Loki's transdimensional ally. So spoiler ahead in this chapter. Surtur had created a true Ragnarok, thus wounding the animals I am using as well as killing off all of Asgard. Hope this helps, now read on, review, and for the love of all THST is holy and unholy, stop bitching about grammar, I ride on a damn galaxy cell phone. Naruto stood there with a twitching of his brow as he looked at the sight before him, he could say he was normally a calm and collective kind of person. But right now, he had the feeling, no the undeniable urge of grabbing Issei by the back of his neck and play a game of human for speed with the pervert. Vacuous before him was a sight Issei would have sold his ungodly perverted soul for. As Asia, Kaneko, Akeno and Rias had their cloths melted away by an acidic parasitic blob of goo. Well he was fine with Rias' bare beauty, he was not fine with it being seen by anyone else but himself. Though the bits of Hito his cheeks from seeing the other girls didn't help him. Issei. The voice of death never terrified Issei more in his life as it did now. When we get back, you will run the lava pits, the tundra fields, and the barren wastes for just looking at my woman. I will personally take great pleasure in reducing your bones to dust, your flesh to ash, and your pathetic soul to nothing but a speck of salt. The smell of piss and shit filled the open field in the forest. Well froth foamed from Issei's mouth as the image of the Beast of Ten Tails stood towering behind Naruto looking down upon him, like it was ready to turn him into a blood sludge staining the grass. Disgusting parasite, be gone to oblivion with you. Declared the blonde as the ooze-like monster was obliterated and boiled away with a wave of his hand. A thing like that should never have been created. It was quite for a moment until Naruto heard bleeding of dying animal that was not far from him. Heaven's White Palace. Anaisama. The angel prophets have had a vision of a prophecy yelled a young blonde woman with blue eyes that had sense of urgency in place of her normally hyperactive nature. The blonde she was addressing was a feminine male, whose eyes always had a sad look. Yes Gabrielchen. The man said with a slight smile. I have some bad news. There is no good or bad news. It's just news, Gabrielchen. Michael said with a closed eye smile. The prophecy is about his return. Gabriel shouted in both fear and excitement, although their grandfather was banished into the abyss, he was always kind to her and her siblings. But it was the look on her brother's face that showed he know as the Archangel of Death, before it turned into a surprise look of unbelieving. Oh, that is bad news. Tell me sister what does the prophecy say? It was an order of from an Archangel, not a brother. 
he shall ride the beast that runs across land, sea, and air. The beast that carried the valiant dead across the rainbow bridge. Reborn as the stead of catastrophe. He shall tame the great wolf of fire and earth, the ender of days come. Noble and proud with a wolf's head held high. Reborn into the wolf of ruination. Perched upon his shoulder, the sole surviving sibling of Boar's son's murder flock. The great storm yields to the heavy beat. Reborn as the raven of disaster. Riders and bringers of chaos are the heralds of Cho as they shall forever be. Midnight strike on crimson moon's light. He shall forge them anew. Swiftness and speed. Petastros is born. Hours and strength. Ruinous is born. Light and sight. This Astero is born. The forewarned, children of light, dark, and twilight. Should harm befall his red strings of fate. All day's end shall begin. For it is she that hold the world's fate with unknowing hands. Once Gabriel finished repeating the prophecy to her elder brother, only to she a slight flinch in his hand, she knew her brother was uneased by this prophecy. The choices presented to them were very small, but had the biggest outcomes. It was either do nothing and let the world live of try and do something that ends of reality. Gabrielchen, I need you to find him and bring him here. Or two at least neutral lands. Take two of the swordsmen with you. Just to be safe. Michael said as he ponders ways of peace he could make with his grandfather. Ha, has it been 10,000 years already? Time really does fly. Familiar forest. Our Aunt Saint Blonde being had walled through the familiars for searching for the bleeding he had heard not long ago. But the sight he saw before him was not what it expected to see. Because before laid three brutally injured animals. Animals he had not seen in over 18,000 years. One was a horse with an icy gray fur, silver mane and tail hair, blue eyes, and eight Norse runes on the front teeth, and the final feature setting apart from other horses were the eight powerfully legs. What was left of them? As it was stained with scorch marks and charred blood. Beside him laid an equally big animal with crimson red pelt, wath blue war paint markings. Golden eyes that should have shined as bright as the sun, the black obsidian teeth that could tear through dragon skin. The last was a large raven no bigger than three and a half feet tall, with a wingspan of 67 feet, if its one wing wasn't slashed at the halfway joint. The off-orange and gold-colored leather collar setting it apart from his sister's brown and black collar. Even the mismatched eyes of black and blinding blue told Naruto who these animals were. Sleepner, Fenrir, and Hugin. What happened my old friends? Naruto said he knelt beside the wounded horse and wolf, while the raven hopped and skipped it ways close to the being of chaos. Turning his sights to the enlarged raven, Naruto locked eyes with the blue eye of the black feathered bird. That was when he began to see the happenings of Asgard from beyond the voids of the abyss. Like looking to the galaxy throughout a water lens, Naruto witnessed the death of Odin and his kingdom by the fire demon giant Surtur Elderstil. His flames killing and devastating all life throughout the world tree of their realm. It was only when Odin and his sons, Loki and Thor. Were they able to cast these animals and the few survivors into the abyss hoping for their safety? Where the others were or even Hugin did not know even with Odin's eye gem in his eye. Such pain, such suffering. I should have taken that bastard's head from his neck the moment he was born. Naruto said in anger, only for the beasts to feel his power flowing. Asama. All in our world has been lost. Burned to ash. If any did survive they would not much longer. Came a tiny voice from the raven, as it bowed to the god of gods. Lord Odin himself looked for our safety at the cost of his own life. He even thought many of us feel saddened by his death even from the Odin force we feel he wants us to live without the fire, one finding us. Howards. The lot of them. I am Fenrir, wolf of Ragnarok come. I could have fought him. I could have helped. Came a voice sounding much like a young child, with sadness of being a failure and unable to help. Why did you not trust me? Father. He did trust you, little brother. Father cared for all his children. Hells and Jormungandr's death harmed his heart, our brother and sister died before he could even save them, he wasn't going to let his two younger children die if he could help it. Said th heavily wounded horse. Fenrir, know that our father Loki loved all his children. But when Hell was found dead in her own kingdom mutilated by that bastard and Jormungandr headless and skin to the bone. He didn't want you, nor I to suffer that fate. Hearing his elder. Father's words, well he saw the logic, it did nothing to soothe the pain. Sleepner, Fenrir, Eugen, I could heal you. But since the Odin force does not exist here, it would be impossible. But since I exist everywhere and nowhere, I could infuse your souls with my power rebirth you all into beast of my essence. Naruto said looking at the three animal. Chasama. I will be honored to ride into battle with you. But I still sleep nurse said only to cut off by Naruto. You will have your vengeance. All of you will see that Surtur's heart will be ripped from his chest. Should you choose. You had me at vengeance, I wish to be reborn. Lord Chaos. By the flames of Ragnarok I will be your faithful hound. 
Fenrir said as he tried to stand proudly only to fall back to ground feeling shame at being so easily weakened. Turning to look at the other two, Naruto could tell they wanted to say something, which he motioned them to. Thasama, I know I may not help much, since all I ever did was report the ongoings on Midgard to Odin. But I hope in your service I could be of some use. The raven said as he bowed his head. Turning to look at Fenrir's last remaining family member. Who was looking at the others before turning his head to the created of all things. Millard, I will stand ready should you need me, I will carry you into battle as I had Lord Odin. All the eight points of the compass are not beyond my reach, land, sea, and air are among my domain. I am your stead now. Said the horse with ragged breathing. As it could feel the touch of death nearing its immortal soul. Then by my power of chaos, you all will be reborn, your names forgotten, but your memories will stay. You will no longer be just myths and legends. You will be my heralds, beasts they will represent my power of destruction and creation. Now rise to your new master. Naruto said as he pulled his belt buckle off and splitting it into three equal pieces all in one hand, while in the other he formed three black balls that hovered over the three animals, before they lowered themselves covering the animals completely like a blanket, but for turning into larger spheres. Sending the pieces of the belt buckle into each enlarged sphere, Naruto watched as the spheres slowly melted away, leaving behind three large animals. The black horse with four mightly legs, golden hooves, mane and tail which were now bladed instead of hair, and a long golden horn, and crimson eyes. Raise Catastros, the first of your kind and first of your name. You are now Catastrophe personified, bringer of chaos. Naruto announced as the reformed horse reared back on his hind legs, giving a loud powerful neigh. Turning his attention to a black wolf with red marking, now instead of the Norse runes, they were now the markings of chaos and fire. Even his eyes now had become a golden color. Standing just as tall now as his brother. The great wolf looked to his new master for a name. Runus, my agent of ruination and bringer of judgment. The last of the beast broke free from the glass-like shell of darkness. Now standing 6-5 feet tall, with a wingspan of 910 feet wide, was raven with sapphire blue flames, long its chest and wings. Even its crowing send ripples throughout the sky as thunder and lightning flashed in the sky. This is Tero, my harbinger of darkness and lord of violent storms. And in your wake disaster will remain. Looking at each other, the soon realized they were no longer of flesh and blood. Even with their new powers they felt betrayed. I am sorry if these new body are no among the living. I had to transfer your souls into what in this realm has come to be known as scared gears. But instead of three separate gears, you three are a single gear. Each with your own powers and abilities. The blonde said as he could feel he had drained his powers far more than his had intended to. I shall begin with Disastero, flight is a given ability, but due to that odd and gem in your eye, I had made it so you are my archer armor. With holy and unholy power, you can make holy light or unholy obsidian arrows or feathers that will act as three knives with a beat of your wings. This Astero feel pride at finally being able to be of use in combat, the power of unholy and holy light was fascinating. Ruinous, you are my primary armor. To be formed whenever I use the gear's power. Your weapons the fangs of chaos are unique. Where one is defending from an attack, it will take the magic used, be it holy or unholy, and it transfers it to the other, but as its opposite, if attacked by a holy power, one will absorb it, the other expels the unholy equivalent to the attack. Silver teeth gleamed in anticipation. Finally Catastros, you have the most unique ability. You are not just armor. You are also combining armor with Disastero and Ruinous. Which will not only increase their powers, but also their abilities. Even become a stead of use for myself or even my armored forms. The sound of that caused the horse to stomp his feet in excitement. There is a final ability shared among you. It is the final form. Noah's Titanus. Were the three of you combined with each other and myself to allow access to the powers of chaos in both yourselves and myself. Naruto said as he sat down, he could feel how's powers of chaos drop down below to a fourth of what it once was. Meaning that the other three each have a fourth of the chaos power inside them. Well. This is interesting, very interesting indeed. All right now. I have finished let's go, my princess is waiting for me. Feeling his legs give out beneath him, he was about to fall you till he felt a pair of claws grabbing him at the shoulders, lifting him up until he landed on the back of Catastros. Well ain't this embarrassing. Naruto muttered to himself, only to hear miffed laughter from his new companions, before Disastero and Ruinous they disappeared into his wrist forming a black and gold wristband, with slots for three gems, but only showed two. A ruby and a sapphire. Judging by Catastro's color it would be either an amber orb or another golden gem of some kind. Alright Catastro's let's go. Back with Orc. Rias was very impressed with Asia's familiar, a thunder dragon, a baby thunder dragon. It was amusing to see the small little bundle of hyperactive stroms shock the living hell out of his say when he got too close to the blonde girl. But everyone's musing was ended when they heard the sounds of hooves hitting the ground in a lazy manner. 
the sight of a black and gold unicron was said to be so rare that only once every 900,000 years would one never get to see such rare beauty, there was even a law between both angels and demons about gaining one as a familiar. And could only be accepted if the creature chose the person. But seeing Naruto on top of one was amazing even if he looked dead tired sitting there. But what got her eye the most was that on closer inspection, the beast was made of metal or perhaps scales of some kind. Hey princess, you'll catch flies with your mouth open too long. Naruto said as he hopped off his new familiar. Only for him to disappear like his others and appearing as an amber gem on his wristband. Narakin, what was that? His king asked as he still felt tired. Looking at her he gave a grin like he normally would. Hell you later, after a good meal and some rest. He said never noticing that the small blue and white dragon that was hiding behind Asia, shaking in fear at Naruto's presence. I am going home. But that Naruto left the others behind, Riaz looked a little put off by his behavior, but let it slide as she knew he must have done something to make him this tired. Naruto woke up the next day to fingered sets of eyes looking at him, he rolling over Narut wrapped his arm around Riaz, who laid beside him in her naked glory. Not the best thing to do with a growing young male beside you, as for Naruto, Mount Naruto was slowly on the rise. Rolling onto his back, Naruto gave an irritated sign before sitting up to look at the owners of the three sets of eyes. What he saw confused him. What? The fuck happened to you guys? Naruto slightly amused by the three animals before him. The first to speak was a chibi black horse, if anything it looked like a cartoonish stuffed horse. My best guess. We are in our dormant state. So unless you need us in combat we are stuck like this. Catastro said rubbing his long chin with his hooves in thought. Which was somewhat weird to watch as the leg arm movements were more human than animal. I find it unfair that you and Fenrir get cute animal forms and I get this. This sparrow body. Disastero said with a childish pout, folding his wings with a huff. Hey, you think I enjoy being a pup again? Well think again. Said the last member of Naruto's familiar sacred gears. It was a small black wolf cub that looked more like a baby husky than anything else, but his tone showed he hated the new appearance. Naruto found the sight amusing to watch as three reincarnated animals snipped and snapped at one another. Calm yourselves, Riaz is trying to sleep, and I don't want her to be awoken by complaints from those that should be grateful. Naruto said as he gave the three a look that sent chills down thire spines. Turning his sights back to his sleeping mate. Funny it only now I think of her as such. When before it was nothing more than to taste the flesh of lust. You've changed me, Riasham. Hovering the reed in a blanket, Naruto got out of bed with his reincarnated familiars following him. Tasama, may I ask what is planned for today? Asked the black horse as he trotted beside his new master. Training, I wish to test my theory about your new forms. He said as he entered the kitchen only to find a keno in the kitchen dressed in nothing more than a see-through nightgown and skimpy panties. First things first. Why in order's name are you doing in the kitchen? In my kitchen. Dressed like that. Naruto said somewhat displeased by the girl's lack of tact these days. Ara, Ara. Whatever do you mean? I am just cooking breakfast for Bachisama. The young Nephilim said with fake smile. So the fact you are dressed in a lingerie nightgown with a bikini thong and no bra. Says what exactly? The blonde said as he looked her over. He would be lying if he said he did not find the girl attractive. Although the animalistic side of him was screaming at him to take the girl now and make her his own, he could not he cared for his heim and he wished not to harm her in any form, be it physical or emotional. My, my. I did not know Narakin would have such impure thoughts of an innocent maiden like myself. Akeno said as she cupped a hand to her cheek with her eyes somewhat closed. Them done. The being of chaos said as he left the room without even eating and was followed by his trio of familiars. Tell Riyashim I would be gone for the rest of the day, I would be back sometime around midnight. Leaving the house completely, Naruto did not know that in just a few short hours, he will no longer be on earth. Nor did he have no knowledge of a curse flame THST would try and steal his heim away from him. Random forest. Naruto stood in a clearing wearing a simple training guy, beside him were his familiars in their full forms. Alright, ruinous. Let try again. Naruto said getting a confirming nod from the lion-sized wolf. Roar of ruination. Aru. And with a great howl, Ruinous jumped at Naruto's back only Ro come apart and form a wolf-style armor that was black as night and was red as freshly split blood. Naruto could feel something along with the armor almost as if. Master, this feels incredible. I can feel your power flowing through me. The reborn hound said, which seemed to echo off the armor. The blonde himself looked to see the twin blades THST were formed from the overly large fangs from the wolf form. Even the runes engaged along the blades were such bandaner and slatterner dot or respectively the slaying one and the slaughtering one. I feel it too, old friend. Naruto said that the wolf incarnation thought he left out what he actually felt. Shall we try? Yes master. Grand wolf hunt. 
Naruto roared out as he swung the blades into the ground, and a moment later a pack of fire wolf avatars burst from the ground like rabbit beast, tearing through whatever was in their way. Alright. This is stare your turn. Getting a nod from the raven, Naruto dispelled Ruinous's armored form. Cries of disaster. Naruto said firmly as he stood there as the armor attached itself to his being. With the wings folding over his chest forming a cloak-like armament. On his right wrist was two long stems with Disastero's head mounted on the back of his right hand. A bow. Well now, this should be something. Not seeing an bowstring or anything's these bow itself was only six inches on either side. Until he drew back his hand, like drawing a bow. Only for a dark blue energy to flare to life as an arrow of similar energy was formed on the notch. Letting the arrow fly and seeing the results was what one would expect as half a mountain was blown away. No it was evaporated into nothingness. Holy shit. Was what came from the duo. As the other two watched in both fascination and slight jealousy. Okay. Catastro's you next. But for a few moments nothing happened, this why and tried as he could Naruto could figure it out, why did the armor form for his newly reborn stead not work? His answer came in the form of an idea. Ruinous, Catastro's. Naruto said Jet and G the siblings to perk up. By your essence. Come forth. Inferno Gale. Seeing Ruinous's armor forming his frontal torso and helm, well Catastro's formed the back and limbs. Naruto stood there feeling the same feeling he had before. The Dark Knight of Joas. Came the unison voices of Naruto and his two of three familiars. Looking G himself over Naruto could say that the armor was doing some not foreseen. But looking to Disastero sitting on his perch with a depressed atmosphere around him. H. E. Naruto, knew that feeling. Disastero, Ruinous, Catastro's combine. It was here Naruto felt the full force of what was happening to him. Chaos Winged Knight. This time the once folded wings flared out spreading themselves with great pride. Even the weapon he now had was thrown from the head of Catastro's horse form. As the long horn and mane became a land sword combo. Disengage. Seeing the three familiars separating from him. Naruto felt weak. Extremely weak. As no his guess was correct. He was unprepared for the attack from behind. Turning around to stop the blade from cutting him between his fingertips. He noticed the girl had blue hair, dress and long cloak. Her companion was another girl with dirty blonde hair. Why did you attack me without just cause? Naruto said with a leveled glare. Before the girls could answer he was tackled to the ground by a brightly blonde-haired girl. Ijusama. The looks of disbelief on the two could not be seen as the well-aged immortal reincarnated being looked at the girl on top of him. Welcome back, Shinji Jijusama. Said the holy girl. Good to be back. Gabrielchen. Nordl followed his granddaughter Gabriel, along with two hooded exorcists. Or what he assumed were exorcists. The Sastros, I need you to go and inform Riasham that Jay will be late for dinner and won't be at school for the remainder of the day. The primordial god said to his raven-like familiar, whom perched himself on his master's shoulder. Also, tell Isse. If he does anything stupid or fucks up in any way, I will have him run around Tokyo six times over. It shall be done, Millard. The raven said as it bowed its head and flew off to deliver the message. Turning his attention to the blonde-haired angel, Naruto could not help but feel that something important will happen in his absence. Skip location. The Vatican. Naruto found himself at the business end of many swords and guns, not that these blessed weapons could do him any harm. Lady Gabriel, do you bring this unholy beast into the holy city? Said one of the many priests, just before his was stricken down with a backhand from the young, looking, archangel. Do not disrespect the father of both my father and my unholy uncle. He was what helped made this world, it was from the help from Order and himself. It was from his very seed that you and your kind were born from. This is my grandfather, Joas the creator and destrier of all things. Gabriel said to all that were present, many were shocked to see the archangel behaving like this, compared to hear a gentle nature of being forgiving to anyone. But to openly hit a member of the cloth. That would mean this man before them was to be held with high respect. Calm um, yourself little one. They did not know who I am. Let their ignorance be. Naruto said as he clapped the shoulder of the angered angel, who quickly turned back to the innocent loving angel, many knew her as. Excuse me, but may I ask who you are? You feel both holy and unholy. Yet the power's nature flow through you like an endless river that is both calm and quiet, but raging and thunderous. Asked a priest who appeared to be in his late thirties, a short blonde-haired man, with modest five o'clock shadow. At ten in the morning. He also wore white gloves with a cross on the back with some writing. I am Shinju, the god of Chos. Destroyer and creator of world and life. Naruto said as he stepped forward to the man. Watching as the large grin appearing on the blonde man's face. May I ask you name, child of Eve and Adam. I am Father Alexander Anderson, Vampire Slayer. The man said bowing to the primal god. 
it is a pleasure, though I hope you only slay the ones that are guilty of their crimes, and not those that are innocent, because they were bitten by the guilty and turned against their will. Naruto said as he leaked his kai on the priest. Which many in the room felt this ungodly pressure. But none felt it more when Father Anderson, as he fell to his knees, images of his death played in his mind, should he answer the being before him, with the wrong answer. Because all life is sacred, even the life of an innocent undead is sacred, for purity is hard to find in a world where the very land is soaked in the blood of countless lives. Be it from war of faith, color, creed, or even for mundane thing like land and the resource beneath it. Before he remembered another pure soul. Gabriel, can you tell me the reason to the exile one nun by the name of Asia Argento? Without even needing to leak Kai, which made the room to those present felt as if it froze over. And before you even say, she was banished for healing a devil. Please know that the one teaching that is taught, love thy neighbor, is applied to all forms of life. Be they human, angel, fallen, or even devil. He said looking at each and every single one the priests in the room. But one priest whose heart was darkened by the animosity towards the fallen and unholy stepped forward and spoke against the father of both good and evil. She is a heretic, to heal those disgusting devils makes her a witch, she is lucky that we did not burn her at the stake for her acts of blasphemy. Irk yelled the priest before he was held up by the neck from the man he spoke out against. Only to struggle in vain as his windpipe was being crushed by the Cho's god. It is souls like yours that make me regret creating humanity, but also it is the pure soul of Asia that restores the faith I once had for your pathetic kind. Where your soul is blackened by sins against the innocent, her is pure as the whitest of snow for truly following the lesson of forgiveness, even to one's enemies. Naruto said as he now started to float up while still holding a firm grip on the man's neck. So do not talk about being righteous, when she is more closer to being a true saint than you, you worthless act of human shit. Before the man could even curse the being that was far greater than any god, he was reduced to noting, but ash and soot. Ashes to ashes, the sinners go. Dust to dust. The virtuous go. Gabriel said just above a whisper, as she watched her grandfather destry both the body and soul of the deranged priest. In a quick switch of atmosphere, everyone couldn't believe it, as the primordial went from dark and chaotic, to kind and sweet the next moment. So Gaby, are we going to meet my sweet grandson Mickey? Naruto said as he grinned at the blonde angel. Hmm hmm. Gabriel hummed an affirmative as she skipped to his side and guided him to the chambers of her big brother. O.R. Serum. Unknown to the primordial god, a certain brunette caused a problem with certain air. I say, I will ask this as delicately as I can. Rhea said with her arms propped up on her desk, with fingers laced together, with a small glare looking over the slender fingers at her palm. But are you out of you goddamn mind? Ignoring the reference to the Holy One, Rias was now standing with her palms planted on the desk as she shouted at the pawn. The slight flinch that caused the young demoness to almost feel guilty for shouting at the boy. Almost. I couldn't stand that pompous punk slobbering over you like that. And Narita Senpai would have my head. Or Weem, if I didn't do something. Issei countered as he knew the primordial would have punished him if he didn't stop the overly dressed chicken. Regardless, now we have to deal with the match and quit a few hours from now. Rhea said with a sigh, knowing that her pawn was correct in his statement. If only Nehru. Whatever she was going to say, she did not finish as Desastros flew in huffing and puffing. Riasham, I am here to tell you that my master will be gone for a while yet, he would most likely be here around some time and tomorrow morning. Said the small raven before it fell forward. Since flying from the Vatican to Japan was roughly a three-day trip for the poor bird. Where is he? Rhea's asked very concerned as to the whereabouts for her lover. Visiting his grandchildren. Gabriel and Michael. DeSastro said sitting on the desk sipping a cup of tea that Akeno had given him. As in the Archangels. Yep. Master sent me to notify you and the others. Oh. I almost forgot. The bird said turning its head to Issei. Millard has sent a warning to the dragon handler. Don't fuck up, Issei, or I will make you run around all of Tokyo. Six. Times. Over. I hope you didn't do anything stupid. The color of Issei's face turned white as snow, while Naruto was kind and caring, his training methods were enough to make gods and devils alike to cry out in sorrow. I am so dead. The boy in question said as his knees gave out and fell to the ground. The sound of thousands upon thousands tormented of souls cried out in the background as Issei accepted his doomed fate. The Sastros raised a non-existing eyebrow before looking over to his master's mate. Who okay? What's his malfunction? The bird asked only to have his question unanswered but decided to ask another. So is there something that Millard should know? No, just a minor hiccup. Rhea said instantly which caused the bird's eyes to narrow. I know it not my place to say such things but. If you are in any trouble just tell the master, he does care for you, you know. The bird said before it fluttered to the window, giving the Riti a final glance. 
master would be very disheartened if something were to happen to humility, he care for you just as he had her if not more so. The bird then flew out the window, leaving the guilty feeling redeed and a frightened Burnett. Isay, as of now Kibikin, Kinekachin, and Akinachin. Have been training you until you can no long stand. Should this fail. Naruto will mostly like kill you should you fail. Rhea said as she flopped down into her chair. Pray to whichever god THST will allow your pleads to be here. Because if we lose against Razor Phoenix I would be forced to marry him. Her tone turned depressed as her mate was gone for the time being. I'm gonna die. Was all Issei could say as he knew Naruto would do far worse than the light run around the large city. Unknown to either of them, Disastro sat on the window ledge above the club room and had heard everything. Master must be informed. The bird said before it swirled away leaving just a few feathers behind. Michael's chambers. So that's what happened in my time gone from this realm. Naruto said to the eldest archangel, whom sat across from him as they drank tea and ate some small snacks. As he told them what he had done in the last 10,000 years. My word, grandfather. You have been busy, I still wish to say I am sorry we had to cast you into the void. Michael said with much regret in his silvery voice. Still a stiff eh? I thought after thing all this time you would have loosened up. Naruto said as he smirked while stroking Gabriel's hair as she napped in his lap. I am still surprised that even after my departure, none my legacies have held peace between the two. It pains me. I created the original two factions, I made so the balance between good and evil to live in peace. But I just see bloodshed and the death of countless innocents dying for a cause that is both redundant and stupid. Michael felt guilt from the disappointment he felt from his grandfather, he just hoped he didn't have to hear those words. I am not mad at any of you. Michael's fears had been realized. I'm just disappointed. To hear the man who raised him after the death of his own father, he always sought Shinju. Naruto's approval and praise, but to hear those words was like stabbing his own heart with a blade of unholy fire. But, the blame does not fall upon you alone Mickey, it is shared between all the factions. But right now this glass-like peace between the three factions is. Acceptable. Naruto said with a grin, which was slowly spread across Michael's face. But their little reunion was interrupted by the crowing of Disastros as he flew through the open window. Disastros, how was the trip? Naruto asked with a humorous tone. Bad news Millard. Someone has made a challenge to take your mate from you, and now is in a raiding game to ensure that if she wins she stays yours, though if she loses. The bird squeaked as he felt the change in his master's demeanor, as his eyes started to change from his azure sky blues to scarlet crimson red. Even the room around them started to show the effects of this change, the once homey and cozy, feeling the warm the chambers now felt as if the heat was turned to a boiling point, while everyone felt a deep chill run through their insides. Is that so? Well I must show this fool his place in the world. Was all he said as he turned his attention to his grandchildren. Well Mickey, Gaby. I must be going drop by sometime and we will enjoy a dinner or something. Even with a feeling of undeniable doom permeating the room, Michael and his sister felt the kindness from their grandfather. Giving only a nod that he heard his grandfather, Naruto left the room through an open window. The Tastros. The blonde primordial yelled as he landed on the back of the steed of Choas, before a trail of purple fire followed behind the chaotic lord and his horse. The pan, after Rhea's losses her match. Naruto arrived late at night at Issei's house, much to the fear of said individual, as he was the only one from Rhea's peerage he could sense. The boy could feel the darkness radiating off the blonde god. That was before his door was kicked wide open. Issei could feel his life being sucked into the endless abyss of anger that stood before him. But it was the three words that came from the blonde that made him wish he died by Razor's hands. Tell. Me. Everything. Even his voice changed to a darker tone as he spoke to the dragon user, and after a long story-style explanation Issei could only flinch as Naruto reached out with a clawed hand. The boy seen the primordial use that frightening ability to turn things to ash on contract. So his reaction was valid, but thankfully he only felt the hand ruffle his hair as he opened an eye to look at the blonde, only to see a smile. You did good, Issei. Not perfect but good. Before Issei could say anything a summoning circle appeared on the floor with the white-haired woman that he met before standing beside for the two men. Ah, granddaughter. Good to see you again. Narek said though there was some steel in his voice. Shinjijijisama, I was unaware you would be here. The woman said in a flat tone, but the fear was evident. Of course I would be here, this boy is my mate's pawn after all. Naruto said carelessly before his tone changed to show how displeased he was. And just recently I found some overdressed chicken thinks he could take what is mine. Now Grafia was sweating, she knew her great-grandfather was very very power, and finding out he had taken Rias as his mate was both pleasant and disturbing to know. Pleasant because he would be the kind of man she would need, but the downside is his overprotectiveness and his territorial personality. I did not know about that, Jijusama. 
though if you allow me to write hat mistake I would offer you this it would allow you to travel to the underworld to reclaim your mate. The maid themed devil said as she offered a slip of paper with a seal on it. Looking at the paper, Naruto could only smirk. Thank you Gretchen. As he took the paper and was about to leave, but turned to the boy standing terrified behind him. When we get back, your training will be doubled. Before he and Issei disappear, though the latter had a steam of unending tears of the pain he would later feel. Naruto and Issei appeared outside of a large modern castle, to which bared the Phoenix family crest of a phoenix rising from the flames. The primordial god could only roll his eyes at such a cliché depiction. The manor's colors were gold, scarlet, and blood orange. Giving the place the look of being on fire. But Naruto tore his attention away from the tacky-looking building to his slave. I mean student. Yes student. 9-9. Nine, nine. The Saichin, I need you to go inside and cause a small distraction, and I don't mean causing a fight. Get the others to help you. The blonde said to his living stress ball. I mean apprentice. Hi. Right away, Naruto senpai The dragon user said before Naruto sent him away with a transportation spell. Now to look badass as possible. Naruto said with an evil gleam radiating from his eyes. Armor up, disistero. In a flash of blue and black flames, Naruto was covered from the neck down in his raven knight armor. He then summoned his chaotic stead as he rode towards the castle. But Issei and fellow ORC members. Issei appeared from the spell dressed in a James Bond type dress suit beside Kiba and Akeno, while Kaneko was somewhere near the desert table, munching on numerous wheats. Oh, Isakin. I didn't know you were here. RRR. The formal dressed Nephilim said as she cupped her cheek with mock grin. Um, I was sent here by Naruto Senpai, he needs us to cause a distraction. The Burnett said in a quickened tone, before the KAOH Academy's pretty boy turned to look to he vice president of their club with an unsure look on his face. Akena Senpai, you used to take choir, did you not? Kiba asked the Ravenette. Hmm. Yes I did why? I just had idea. Kiba said as he leaned in and whispered his plan to her. RRR. That is a wonderful idea. Akeno said as she left the group and walked over to the stage where the orchestra was stationed. Gentlemen, could you play this in C minor? Where have all the good men gone? And where are all the gods? Where's the streetwise Heracles? To fight the rising odds. Sitting upon his reborn steed, with a fire burning with his eyes as he rode towards the mansion-like castle. The padding of heavy breaths and snorts from Catastros as the cold night are became misty, as the godlike horse trotted as a trail of black and gold flames were left in his wake. Isn't there a dark night upon a blazing steed? Late at night I toss and I turn. And I dream of what I need. How Maria's, my darling. Let us enjoy a dance for the people. Said a tall blonde man, whose face was far too angular for Rhea's, even his hair was more close to a rustic bronze, instead of golden blonde like her beloved's. I need a hero, I'm holding out for a hero. Till the end of the night. He's gotta be strong. And he's gotta be fast. And he's gotta be fresh from the fight. As he neared the gate, the ancient god looked upon several guards that blocked his entry. Alright Tissistero, let's let the arrows fly. Naruto yelled as he drew his right arm back while holding his left arm forward. As a blue and yellow arrow appeared, just as the sounds of thunder and sparks could be heard. Thousand arrows of the storm. I need a hero, I'm holding out for a hero. Till the morning light. He's gotta be sure. And it's gotta be soon. And he's gotta be larger than life. Larger than life. As Rias danced with the heir of Phoenix house, she could help but feel disgusted as he peered at her queen and rook with a look she had come to hate from Issei, at least with him he was open with his desire. Somewhere after midnight. In my wildest fantasy. Somewhere just beyond my reach. There's someone reaching back for me. Faster my friend. Faster. Naruto said as he encouraged his newborn friend, as he felt the dark horse jerk forward as he increased his speed as he raced through the halls. Racing on the thunder. And rising with the heat. It's gonna take a superman. To sweep me off my feet. Where are you Naruto? Why are you not here? Did you abandon me? Rias thought as doubt began to sink into her heart. Up where the mountains meet the heavens above. Out where the lightning splits the sea. I could swear that there's someone somewhere watching me. As Naruto rounded a corner he and his companions came face to face with a small platoon of gourds. Only for Catastros to leap over the men racing down the halls. Only for the black and golden horse to make a snarky comment. We must be oh the right track master. More of these fools keep popping up. Through the wind and the chill and the rain. And the storm and the flood. I can feel his approach like a fire in my blood. Just as they made the final turn getting closer to the main hall, Ruinus ejected himself from Naruto's wristband. Shocking his master and fellow compatriots. Ruinus. Naruto yelled as he reared Catastro's reins to look back at the husky pup-sized familiar. Only to see the wolf's stern look. Oh Millard, your lady needs you. 
Runa said as he destroyed one of the support pillars cusing the ceiling to collapse. As his master rode his brethren, Runus looked back to see an armed group of gourds approaching. You have given me much, Millard. Only to ask for very little in return. So as of now I shall begin to repay my department. His yellow eyes narrowed as the soldiers drawn their weapons. Pray that Millard is merciful, for I shall not. And guard. Runus yelled as he drew his fang blades as he hacked and slashed through the armored gourds. With a gleam of carnage shining brightly within his eyes. I need a hero, I'm holding out for a hero. Till the morning light. He's gotta be sure. And it's gotta be soon. And he's gotta be larger than life. Looking over to her peerage, Rias could not help but feel as if her world was going to end. Her lover, mate, boyfriend, whichever one would be correct to call him was a no-show. He's gotta be strong and he's gotta be fast. He has gotta be fresh for the fight. I need H-E-R-O. Suddenly the grand doors to the great hall slammed open, as an armored man upon a mighty horse that could be mistaken for the third rider of the apocalypse, but he golden mane and hooves told them that this horse was much more powerful. The armored man looked to be a fallen angel, if not for the fact the helm was that of a raven. Everyone could feel his power, the darkness that radiated from the man. But only one person felt the full extent of his fury, as Razor felt like a mouse looking into the gaping jaws of mighty lion. Ungodly yellow eyes peering down upon him as he drew closer on his horse, the clicking of golden hooves trotted across the marble floor. In a burst of golden and obsidian flames, the horse vanished, the man stood no more than twelve feet away, and drew close as he walked towards race and the phoenix air. Even though the wing armor slowly started flake away in a shower of dark blue feathers, leaving the unarmored Naruto dressed in an Italian dress suit with a red Japanese silk necktie. His hair slicked back, sport shade with a class mirror tint. So what this about a wedding? Last I check I didn't even set a wedding date with my woman. Naruto said getting everyone's attention as he took Rhea's hand and lead her away from the poorly dressed male. But before he could continue, he was sadly interrupted by the overly inflated ego blonde standing behind him. Razor demands to know who this low-level devil that dares to impose himself upon my woman. You know it is customary to give you name before asking for someone else. Naruto said as he took in the dress Rhea's was wearing. Haim, why did you dress in such a tasteless and displeasing outfit? White was never you color. But the snap of his fingers the white wedding that she wore was set ablaze, only for a beautiful ruby red strapless dress with a slit in he gown that went almost all the way up to her hip. Jessica Rabbit's dress. Now that is a dress you should be wearing. It bring out you true beauty of those beauty eyes of yours. Naruto said as he ran his fingers through her hair causing her to blush slightly. This was the last straw for the blonde firebird, as fire soon ignited as his anger rose. I, Razor Phoenix demands to know who the hell you are. The young man yelled as his dress cloth started to burn away leaving behind a gimp-like suit underneath. Rising penis. Damn you must have been bullied as a kid. Naruto said as if it did not matter to him. All noble families gasped as this unknown man openly insulted the heir of the Phoenix household, as if his nobility or birthright meant nothing to this powerful being. Not penis you imbecilic buffoon. It's Phoenix like the mythical firebird to rise from its ashes. So your name is Rising Penis, and you rise from people's assess. Naruto said aloud causing the man to become enraged by the lack of respect. I guess everyone here has to watch their bottoms just in case you pop up for a visit. This gained nervous laughter from those in the hall. Naruto grew bored of the banter he was forced to have with a young fool, so he turned his sights on the one that would help his cause. Serzichas, get over here. Naruto said calmly only to receive no reply. This annoyed him greatly, so he roared his demand which rumbled and shook the foundation. Now. He, sorry for the lateness, Lord Chaos. The High Satan said which many around them were terrified to hear that their lord, thy own personal god, has returned from beyond the abyssal veil. Had I known, I would have prepared a proper welcome. But to hear that you captured my dear sister's heart. I never been so proud to hear such wonderful news. Enough ass kissing Serzichas. You and I both know you very much hate my present here, let alone your sister's involvement with me. Naruto said as he glanced at the redeated devil, whose cheerful smile was replaced with a scowling frown. Your ability to see though me is still impeccable, even after 10,000 years. Said the eldest sibling of the Germary family, thought his jubilant way of speak stayed though his face was marred with disappointment. I am more surprised that you have escaped your imprisonment. 10,000 years of what you would call imprisonment, I call a chance to grow stronger, the longer I was there, I found that when I created this new form, it grew stronger with each new enemy I faced, for almost 20 years this body knew suffering unlike any other. To know what it was like to be hated for something beyond my own control. To be beaten, shunned, lynched, being the test subject for others to test new powers on my person, blamed for things I have not done. But through these hardships I became greater, being the lowest of the low, only to rise above all others, and I only had one billionth of my actual power given to me. 
It was only until I reached 16 years of age was when I gained my old power, and after that. I took back the power that was stolen from me at the cost of every single life that had ever lived on that pitiful world. Nothing was left other than a husk world. The blonde primordial said as he sent a small wave of power towards the redeated man, only to see him buckle beneath his power. So please do not insult my power or presence with you facade of kindness and witty humor. But back to the matter at had, I would like to challenge Mr. Rising Penis to a rating match, the stakes are simple enough he wins he shall have Rias as his wife to be, with the added bounce of having a seat of power. But should he lose he will be stripped of his so-called right to marry my beloved Rias. Before Serzich's could discuss further into detail about the offer, he was cut off when Razor announced his agreement to the match, think he would win like every other match he had played. Excellent, now it shall be a 1 vs 16 match, obviously I am the one that will fight his entire set. Naruto as he looked down to Rias, who wore a concerned look only for him to give a slight smile to comfort her. Riasham, do you trust me? Rias was confused by her lover's question, but could only nod doubly in response. Then don't worry so much, I will beat this rising penis and kick his sparkler ass. Naruto said with a wide fox-like grin. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.